to Sonia Wagner representing PCA families in one of our recordings designed to capture lived experience and best practice evidence-based learning that assists kinship, permanent and adoptive parents or carers in supporting young people. We are a child safe organisation. Being able to learn from peers and connect with those who may help us is particularly important. Today we are discussing how to support school leavers, particularly when there is school disengagement or young people are leaving care or school. Before we do, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet. We pay respect to elders past and present and express our intention to move together to a place of justice and partnership. Today, I'm joined by two members of Raising Expectations, Joe Humphreys and Laura Cashman, who work for the Centre of Excellence in Child and Family Welfare, Victoria's peak body for child and family services. Joe is the program manager for Raising Expectations as a, and is an experienced program and project manager, coach, mentor and performance auditor and has been Raising Expectations program manager since early 2016. Joe strongly believes in the power of education to transform lives and the rights of all people regardless of circumstances so they are supported to access post-secondary education. Laura is the Project and Communications Officer at Raising Expectations. Laura has experience working on projects in the out-of-home care sector that raise awareness about the care experience and is a social work and law student passionate about education and social justice. Welcome, Joe and Laura. Thanks, Thank Sonia. You. Great to be here. <laughs> Raising Expectations supports young people in out-of-home care and care leavers to aspire to and access vocational and higher education. And some of our research tells us that children and young people living in out-of-home care are at greater risk of poorer educational outcomes than those in the broader community. So including risk of things like lower school attendance and engagement, less developed foundational skills, educational skills, lower participation in higher education and university and disengagement from school. We see in PCA families that it can be a struggle to continue to engage with school after 16 years of age. So there are programs, pathways and options out there to help families and provide viable opportunities for young people to get to TAFE and university, like the Raising Expectations program. Can you tell us about the program and why it is so very important? Sure, yeah, look, um, thanks. Thanks for the opportunity, Sonia. So look, Raising Expectations has been going for about five years now. Uh, it was recognised that young people um, who have spent time in care just are not um, going to university in the same way that other young people um, have that opportunity because they have the support of their families. Mm -hmm. So the, the social and economic barriers for young people in care getting to uni have been significant. Mm -hmm. and this really has been overlaid by the requirement to exit care on or before your 18th birthday. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you have to do that, there's an abrupt ending to school um, and really there isn't much, there isn't the option to think about, can I go on and do further education? Because actually I've got to think about where I'm going to sleep, have I got a roof over my head, how am I going to feed myself? Mm. Um, You're in or, survival. Yeah, it, it's all... <laughs> really dire stuff mm -hmm. so fortunately at the beginning of this year um, there has been a change in policy and young people um, will now have extended support to the age of 21 which is fantastic because it really is life-changing yes it gives young people the opportunity a to finish school mm -hmm and not be thinking about in year 10, 11 and 12, you know, how am I going to, how am I going to cope? Mm. Um, and they can, you know, they've got genuine options then to think about going on to TAFE or going on to uni. So, yes. So, absolutely. so raising expectations has kind of evolved, um, you know, during this process and, it's just so fantastic that there has been that significant policy change. Yeah. I mean, everyone needs support in some way, don't they? So, um, they do. so you're really targeting what, you know, those school leavers need for sure. So, yeah. 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 And I think, I think the other thing, Sonia, is, is, you know, young people in care, for them to know that there's somebody at university or TAFE who 
knows what it is to be in care, doesn't have to ask all the questions, but has some empathy and understanding, that makes a big, big difference. Mm. Um, so to know the support is there if you need it is, mm. is huge. Yes. It's yeah, huge. Yeah. 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 You don't have to explain your whole situation, right? It's, you got someone that's going to completely understand where you're at without having to explain your whole story. That's um, right. Yeah. Because often that's yeah. triggering too, right? So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's I great. think a big part of the program as well is sending that strong message that young people with the care experience or in care are extremely capable of succeeding at TAFE and uni and then going on to great careers as well. And we're really lucky to um, speak to and work with lots of care experience people, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in the work that we do. Mm -hmm. um, and we know that there are people who've grown up in care who are working in industries of all different types um, after going to TAFE or uni or finding their own way there. And it's really important, I think, that young people in care know that, that there are people out there who are doing fantastic things with their lives. Mm -hmm. um, one example that comes to mind is uh, a young man named Luke who grew up in care, um, mm -hmm. who's now working for Commonwealth Bank as a um, home finance manager um, and is also on the board of the Foster Care Association of Victoria. So Luke dealt with all of the same obstacles that Joe's just mentioned um, mm -hmm. and all young people come across and it certainly wasn't easy for him but he's now doing really fantastic things with his life and that's an opportunity that all young people should have great so good to hear those stories too of of people that have gone before and you know uh, you know are doing what they want to do and and you know th those barriers of um not stop them from doing what they want to do so absolutely um, yeah so we also see a lot of disengagement from school due to factors like anxiety and developmental delays and those sort of things make it really difficult to re-engage at school do you have supports that help with re-engagement at school I think um look we we don't specifically Sonia there are programs um that are run by the Department of Education and Training Lookout and Navigator that help mm -hmm. um young people to re-engage and and be supported but you know sometimes mainstream school just doesn't work for some mm -hmm. young people mm -hmm. um and that may mean you know once they're 16 they would need to get a principal exemption if they were to leave school mm -hmm. um, but provided they're going to go into some other training or education option um, sometimes that that can happen um, mm -hmm. and we have worked with um, community sector organizations where they've been supporting young people to do that okay. um, and sometimes that might be an option um, but there are other programs as well. Uh, there's the Reconnect, Skills First Reconnect program, and there are Learn Locals where, so Learn Locals have, you know, they're all across Victoria, small class sizes. And again, you know, for young people that might find the whole school environment just too overwhelming, mm -hmm. that, you know, again, that could be an option. Um, and reconnect provide sort of wraparound services as well mm -hmm. so I guess um maybe I'll just tell you a bit more about raising expectations yeah. I've sort of <laughs> <laughs> gone off track slightly um so look the focus when the program first started was to get more young people into uni uh mm -hmm. and lift that aspiration mm -hmm. so what what we would say to all young people and to the people that care for them and work with them is encourage them, be supportive and aspire for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, because at some point they will find where they want to be. You know, mm -hmm. it takes all of us a long time. Yes. Some of us <laughs> don't actually really figure it out. Yeah. But, um, you know, it can take a while before you find if you like, where your tribe is and where mm -hmm. you want to be. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the focus was very much on, on university and it was about lifting that aspiration mm -hmm. uh, and saying with the right support, all young people um, who really want to do it will succeed. Mm 
-hmm. So the the Centre for Excellence um, collaborated with uh, La Trobe University and Federation University. They were our founding uni partners. Mm -hmm. And um, that sort of started at the end of 2015. And the two universities provide um, wraparound personal academic financial supports. Mm -hmm. Um, And then in at the end of 2019, Swinburne came on board. So Swinburne and Fed Uni offer vocational courses as well, mm-hmm. as well as higher ed. So, and all three universities have a point of contact for care leaver students. Um, they offer a different range of financial supports um, and will make sure that young people are you know, referred internally to the services and supports that they need at the university mm-hmm. because ultimately we want students to succeed mm-hmm. and the tastes and the unions want students to succeed mm-hmm. so yeah. the supports yeah. are there yeah. yeah okay great so um i guess thinking about some of those aspects around the finances mm. um so you mentioned there's wraparound support um and there are those pathways I think there are there are things like Skills Connect and other supports as well, I believe. Can you tell me a bit more yes. about those? So- yes. yes, that's right. So there is um, a program that uh, uh, the Department of Education and Training Fund, um, it is a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> we will be providing some uh, show notes that Laura's put together for this. So all the links and things we refer to, all the... Um, programs we refer to will be on that Mm -hmm. Um, so the skills first youth access initiative uh, is available to eligible young people who um, the the key three key things around eligibility are you need to be under 24 Mm -hmm. you at some point um, will have been subject to a child protection order or a youth justice order doesn't Mm -hmm. need to be current Okay. at some point mm. um, and to be an Australian, Australian citizen. So those are the sort of three key things. Okay. Um, and then what uh, that means is that you have access to over 800 courses from sort of VCAL, VCE through to advanced diploma that mm. are listed on the Victorian Skills Gateway. Mm-hmm. And most importantly, you don't have to pay tuition fees. So yeah. that, you know, for many young people in care, um, getting to university via a TAFE pathway is often the way they do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, that's often the way that many other young people do it too. Mm-hmm. I think it, you know, gives you an opportunity to build your skills, build your confidence, you get a standalone qualification, and yeah. then... You know, that might work for you. You say spend two years doing a diploma, you might need to have a break for a whole range of reasons, and then you can go on to uni. Mm-hmm. So that, that initiative doesn't cover material costs, mm-hmm. um, but it does pay tuition fees. And um, provided you enroll in the second course at a higher level than the first, and before mm-hmm. you turn 24, then mm-hmm. you can do more than one course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And in fact, actually, that's um, yeah, what a number of our students have done. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for example, a young woman named Sarah, who we've done some work with, who's just graduated from a master's of social work. She actually didn't even finish BCE, um, but she did go to TAFE and build on on her skills that way. So she did two certificate fours at TAFE, one in youth work and one in community work. Yes. Um, and that. TAFE pathway, I think, from what Sarah's said to me, has really helped her build her academic skills, which she kind of had that gap where she didn't finish VCE and have the opportunity to sort of, you know, polish those up there. So she got to improve her academic skills and her confidence as well, which I think is huge. Um, Once she had the confidence, she knew she could, you know, do those um, assessments and assignments and she was building her skills. She went on to transfer um, into uni. And yeah, as a master's level qualification now, and she's actually working as a mental health social worker, but she's also participating in a lot of research um, 
with academics about care leaver experience. So, Great. you know, it just goes to show if you don't finish VC, it's not the end of the road. And like Joe said, TAFE is a great pathway to university um, or, a, you know, an end point in itself. You don't have to go into university. There's so many job opportunities. Yes. That come out of just going to TAFE. And another ex- example of that is uh, Danny, who's a young man who went through the Skills First Youth Access Initiative um, allowed him to do a plumbing apprenticeship. So he's now working as a plumber and he actually won an award last year, um, which is really amazing. The Plumbing Industry Climate Action Center Award. Um, So, you know, he was a young man who left care and was worried about where he was going to sleep and where he was going to live. Certainly didn't have the money to pay for a course, but with the Skills First Youth Access Initiative could do it for free and now is supporting himself um, and working as a plumber. So... Wow. Tape is a fantastic, <laughs> is a fantastic and I think underutilized pathway. So yeah, we're wow. really excited to see more young people going in that direction. Absolutely. It's also a good way, I think, to try something out, isn't it? Rather than committing to some, you know, long term kind of project, you can commit to a year or two years or even six months. So that's right. Um, yeah. So you know, it sounds like the people that you've worked with have sort of moved around a little bit in their kind of journey to, to figure out what kind of works best for them so absolutely um, yeah, yeah so amazing so um I was just wondering so what's the sort of starting point for them is it about contacting yourselves is it going to open days is it going to careers counsellor kind of you know what's the sort of approach is it going to a youth foyer maybe you could talk us through some of those aspects and um Sure. Yeah. Sure. I looks. think I think there's a few different um, avenues. Um, in fact, um, last night we were talking to my stepson, who's in his last year of his, you know, year twelve, and he yes. hasn't got a clue what to do. Yes. So it does make it really difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, the department is is beefing up the support that they offer through schools for careers activities and careers advice. Mm-hmm. Um, so there is, you know, the, those are options as well. Um, the look at education careers advisors are also mm-hmm. working with schools and they have a specific focus on um, young people in care um, and, you know, organizing trips to uh, TAFEs and unis and experience days and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, There's also the skills first, um, no, sorry, skills and job centres. There's a lot of skills happening. Uh, (laughs) Skills and job centres, which are generally co-located with a TAFE. Um, Or in, there's actually, there's one at RMIT. Um, They provide a whole range of different services as well, uh, sort of careers counselling, writing resumes, you know, all that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Plus, because of COVID last year, the TAFEs and unis are putting all their uh, open days online. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, I think in lots of ways that makes it a lot more accessible for young people. Mm-hmm. But instead of sort of, you know, walking around and, talking to lots of people you can actually identify on the website specific things that you're interested in and then register for those Mm -hmm. so I I would I I would strong I know this is hard but Mm. I I would encourage young people to you know it's it's about the work you put in now um, really trying to figure out what interests you Mm -hmm. Um, there's a couple of good websites as well um, the My Futures website and Job Outlook, and they've got various tools and quizzes and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's really trying to work out the kind of area that you're interested in, mm-hmm. and then and then take it from there. Mm-hmm. Bearing in mind that um, careers now for young people will change multiple times during their lifetime. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, but you know this, you know when you're 16 17 18 it probably just feels a bit overwhelming which is Mm. understandable Mm -hmm. um (laughs) i didn't answer your question 
yes, they can contact us via the website or <laughs> call us, absolutely. Um, and primarily what we will do is sort of direct them to the best information sources and, and programs that can help, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we also have a newsletter um, which goes out every fortnight. So once um, you jump onto our website, you'll be prompted to sign up to the newsletter automatically. It's a really good way to keep up to date with what we're doing. As Jo said, it's a there's lots happening and it's always yes. changing. So yes. the best way um, to get the most up to date information is to yeah visit our website, sign up to our newsletter, and we will provide updates in our newsletters about things like open days and experience days, which Joe's mentioned, which are happening quite a lot across um, the next couple of months, particularly at TAFE. So mm -hmm. something to keep an eye out for. Yeah. And do you also cover um, things like the education youth foyers where, you know, they offer some sort of home support for students that are studying that type of thing? I mean, we, we can give you information about mm -hmm. the Education Youth Foyer, certainly. So there's the three main ones, mm -hmm. um, Shepparton, Glen Waverley and uh, Broadmeadows, and mm -hmm. they're co-located with TAFEs. Mm -hmm. um, but for example, one young man that um, I've been working with recently, he's living at the Education Youth Foyer at Broadmeadows, but he's actually studying at La Trobe in Bandura. Mm -hmm. So, um, but look, they are um, a, a great way of young people sort of establishing themselves in, in their study. Mm -hmm. There are other foyers as well. Um, and just by searching um, foyers in Victoria uh, via Dr. Google, you should be able to find them. But if not, you can contact us. So. Mm -hmm. For those people that don't know what education youth foyers are, they provide uh, two years accommodation for young people, um, but there's a deal. So the deal is that, you know, in return for the accommodation and support, you need to be motivated and engaged in study. So that's mm -hmm. kind of, yeah, in a nutshell, yeah. Mm. And they also offer some psychological support as well, don't they? Which I think they is do. particularly Other important support, when you're moving out of home for the first time. So, yeah. um, but the fact that you guys just have all that knowledge and, you know, can, can grasp what can relate to someone's unique situation and, and point them in the right direction is pretty amazing service. So, um, uh, is there anything else that we haven't covered today? Because I know I've skipped around. A little bit. That's right. We've <laughs> gone off any... script. A bit, <laughs> we went off script. <laughs> <laughs> is there um, anyone else you want to talk about in terms of examples, or there, is there any other really important content that we may have missed? Look, I, I think we just um, not not just actually. So when we first started, one of one of the things that uh, does not exist at a federal level or state level is there's no data collected on the number of care leavers um, mm -hmm. at university specifically. Um, mm -hmm. So that raises all sorts of issues because mm -hmm. if you don't know where young people are, how mm -hmm. can you support them? Mm -hmm. um, so one of the requirements from the initial project, which was uh, funded by the Sydney Maya Fund, was to identify and gather data on care leaver students. Mm -hmm. That is a bit tricky mm -hmm. because um, trying to get enrolment forms changed at unis is, is hard. Mm -hmm. But um, there, are, there have been other ways that the universities have sort of worked around it to capture the data. And we know mm -hmm. that we're not capturing mm -hmm. all young people with a care background for a whole range of reasons. Mm -hmm. And that might be because they don't actually identify as a care leaver. Okay. You know, they may have always lived with Nan and Pop and that's how it's been and they don't kind of think anything of it mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, you know, potential label, if you like. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been capturing data now for just over five years and that's sort of starting to give us a bit of a baseline. So in uh, end of 2015-16, we there were 43 identified students at Fed Uni and La Trobe Uni. Mm -hmm. And now 
with Swinburne coming on board as well um, and with sort of that expansion to vocational education as well as higher education, we're probably up around the 400 mark. Wow. But that's, that's only three institutions. Yes. There'll be a lot more young people who've been in care that are at other universities. And we know that. Mm. Um, there just isn't uh, a system at the moment whereby we can capture that data. Mm. Um, ultimately, I would hope that we will get there mm. um, and that they can be recognised as an equity group and be supported mm. in the way that other equity groups are supported. Absolutely. Um, and then so, you learn more about their unique needs too, right? And they're probably things right. that you you can already identify, but um, it's nice to see that statistically as a group to, mm -hmm. to support what you're probably already seeing. So, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And when universities and TAFEs are able to identify care leavers, there are opportunities that our partner universities are providing for support. So, you know, um, scholarships, bursaries, Mm -hmm. um and academic support directly from the tapes and universities so when mm -hmm. once care leavers are identified um our partners at the universities are reaching out to them by phone or email and connecting them in with the services that they have so um right yeah, it's really yes important that we do know who care leavers are so we can give them the support they deserve yes wow that's amazing <laughs> I would have enjoyed that when I was at uni. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's that's just reminded me, Laura. Um, so one of the things we're focused on this year mm. is building our connection with TAFEs. Yeah. Um, and we have established a network and we'll continue to work with TAFEs so that they can identify young people um, with a care background and, you know, provide the support um, to them. I mean, TAFEs generally and unis have the support there, but it's making sure that um, young people are connected into that support yes. mm -hmm. and also feel that they um, are able to access that support. Mm -hmm. um, it is not uncommon for us to hear that care leavers haven't applied for a scholarship because they think somebody else would be more deserving. Mm -hmm. So... Yes. A strong message would be to any um, listeners, if you've got young people in year 12 um, that are thinking of going on to university in particular, make sure that they complete a C's application and we'll make sure this is on the show notes um, because that way they can identify that they have lived in care um, and that way they'll be uh, connected into services but also the university will consider that as part of their application to university mm -hmm. okay great yeah. so um the C's application when when does that need to be done so if you're if perhaps they are going through VCE does that have to be done at a point in time or how does so that actually work that's generally done Sonia when um uh year 12 students submit their application through the VTAC portal. Okay. Uh, so sorry, lots of acronyms here. That's the Victorian <laughs> Tertiary Admissions, Admissions Centre. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when, this is all year 12 students, mm. um, they apply through the VTAC portal to the various institutions and courses they want to do, mm -hmm. they will do a C's application at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, and many schools and students um, can apply through C's as well because mm -hmm. it's, it's recognising uh, a level of disadvantage um, across many areas, not just if you've been in care. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, great. Good to know. <laughs> Uh, anything else you wanted to comment on today? Um, I'm not sure. I think, uh, I think um, well, speaking for myself, you know, the, the young people and more mature care leavers that we meet really are quite extraordinary. Mm. Um, and I think what is so encouraging now is that many more of young people are completing year 12. I don't have stats on that. This is just kind of anecdotally from, mm -hmm. uh, you know, 
young people we have connecting with us. And, you know, they're going on and they're doing double degrees and, you know, mm. it's fantastic. So good. Yeah. 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 And I think a message maybe for, for parents and carers, when this system seems very overwhelming, as it does for all of us, there are so many different moving parts and you've got a young person who's disengaged. A really strong message we got from a young person named Marcel um, about her experience in, in care and in school around feeling like she had really low self-esteem, feeling really disengaged from education when she moved into care. She's now doing a double degree in law and um, arts. And she said that the thing that made the most difference to her was her carers and her teachers consistently, consistently believing in her, setting a high standard for her and looking out for things that she was interested in and then funneling her attention that way. And she was super disengaged she was misbehaving she didn't turn up to school very often but that consistency and that setting that high standard of belief for her was what got her through and got her to finish year 12 and is now seeing her do really really well at uni so I think those little conversations and little moments you have to really show that you care and that you are not going anywhere and you know that that support is there for that young person makes a huge, huge difference, as well as all of the support that's available to them. Yeah, absolutely. Helping people recognise, you know, what they are capable of is yeah. Yeah, really an amazing thing that you can do for a, for a young person. So um, particularly when that young person is sort of, you know, a bit behind the eight ball because they've had all these other survival things to, to manage and right. and deal with in their life. It causes disruption. It's understandable that there would be, you know, a little bit of a delay in maybe getting to that that same space as sure. as their peers. So but that's um, that's okay. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. Most, you know, most people's pathway is, you know, very different. It's rarely is it linear. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's about finding you know and then there's adolescence on top of that mm. <laughs> so yeah and it's never you, time lost is it no, <laughs> so no, no yeah. exactly it exactly. just might make you a better a person at what you're going on to do down the track so right. yeah um yeah. yeah it's amazing so yeah good messages to um always kind of look for those opportunities to reinforce and and support young people so yeah yeah, so thank you so much for both of your time today. We will get a list of resources up um, as well, the ones that you've mentioned. So I think um, families will find it very valuable, the content that you've shared, and no doubt you'll be receiving a few phone calls, I imagine. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so thank you. Hey, thank you thank very welcome. much, Sonia. Thanks, Sonia. And to anyone making the time to listen to this recording, thank you for giving out your valuable time also for the benefit of the young people in your life. If you are a permanent care, kinship or adoptive parent or carer needing help, please call PCA Families um, or Raising Expectations. Please subscribe or leave a comment or share an idea for a future topic. Until next time, have an amazing week.